Hi, and welcome to our weekly market update for the week of October 5th. I'm Dennis Morton here with Katie Brown. Katie, how are you? Great. How are you? Good, good. So it's been an eventful week in an eventful market cycle and an eventful year. Last week, we had the president testing positive for COVID. We had vice presidential debates. We had a lot of just continued churn around the pandemic and the markets are responding accordingly depending on which day you check. So we're going to start today talking a little bit about the political situation, some uh, insights from uh, one of Schwab's top strategists, and then we're going to talk a little bit about stimulus and where that stands heading into the end of the year. And then finally, we're going to touch on long-term care. So a topic we haven't covered here before. So it'll be an interesting discussion around insurance. So. Uh, Katie, let's start off with the election coverage. Liz Ann Saunders, the chief market strategist for Schwab, came out with a great piece talking about the political landscape, how to think about politics, um, and also the most recent events. What did you pick up from that article? Yeah. Well, one thing that I that I really like about Liz Ann, she always puts a lot of research behind her pieces. And so there's a, a lot of historical research going back to 1900, looking at um, every election from 1900 going forward, and then also pulling in market performance um, using the Dow because we have the history going back on the Dow going back to 1900. We are, we are in a different environment. We recognize that, but there have been a lot of things that have happened historically um, since 1900 in our country that it was interesting to see her break it down between you know whether a Republican took office or a Democrat took office and average returns under the both of them but how it almost didn't matter who was in office, you could still have things coming in from the side. So large events, you know, whether it's a war or, you know, other financial crises, um, and it's, it's not as much political driven for some of those things. And the, the market doesn't always respond directly to the political environment as much as it does just the economy itself. Right, I think her line was, the economy impacts elections more than elections impact the economy. And you think back to that famous James Carville line from 1992, it's the economy, stupid. That, that's what's driving people, their decisions. So Lizanne had a great chart we're going to pull up here. This is, again, going back to 1900 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if you had invested $10,000 in January of 1900, but only invested under Republican administration, you would have had $98,000 by October of 2020. If you invested under only a Democrat, you'd have $429,000. Now, before you get too bent out of shape on those numbers, if you had just stayed invested the entire time, you would have over $4.2 million. Her point being, don't try and get in and get out and pick the winners and losers. You have to stay in for the long term because Katie's exactly right. Whether it's 9-11 or World War II, it's the events that happen to the person in office more so than the person in office and how they dictate events. That, that tends to be the, um, the key there. A couple other great lines that I think she had in, in this piece is that there are the things that could change, whether it's taxes, where there's a lot of proposals, but not a lot of agreement on what a, tax, a new tax regime would look like or a continuing tax regime, and then regulation. Those are all things that could change. But what's not going to change because of the election? For example, the Federal Reserve's policy, um, a focus on some antitrust legislation related to big tech companies, mm -hmm. fiscal stimulus. There seems to be a lot of common ground on that. And just the pandemic and its aftermath. I mean, that all of that stuff is going to be status quo for a long time, as much as a new administration or the existing administration might want to you know, make changes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of bipartisan support for for a lot of those things. It's just a matter of finding that that common ground. Or in in the case of, um, you know, the Federal Reserve is independent, so it will run things as as it sees needed for the economy as well. Yeah, and, and that's what makes this year so hard. So, you know, two times this year, we've hit all-time highs in the markets, both before and after the initial thrust of the pandemic. And which which is it? You know, sometimes if the economy is doing well and there's no recession, no bear market, that's really good for the incumbent. Or if the economy is not doing well, that's really good for the challenger. Well, which one of it is it this year? We, we just don't know. And the, I think the voters are going to end up deciding, does it feel like we're in a recession? Does it feel like we're not? Where, where are we, actually? So it's... Um, we have about four weeks left, and we'll continue to keep our finger on the pulse of, uh, of the election cycle. Mm -hmm. All right, so next, we found an article in the New York Times on the status of stimulus. Uh, what, what did we see there? A lot of movement over the past week. 
you know, President Trump coming in uh, just a few days ago and saying that he was pumping the brakes on any stimulus packages coming out before the election. And and there was a quick reaction in the market to, to those comments. And then very shortly afterwards, um, he started kind of breaking apart some of that HEROES Act that, you know, was in negotiation under the proposal and, and pulling certain pieces of it. So talking again about how to support airlines or possibly sending out checks to individuals. And, and so taking some specific pieces of those and saying, all right, it's important for us to push these things through. Yeah. And so... And, and we saw the market, of course, react to that as well. Yeah, and you're also hearing people like Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell weighing in to say, listen, as the Federal Reserve is, is all in on this recovery and stimulative efforts, but we can't do it alone. And he's talked about that if we don't get enough fiscal stimulus to go along with it, you reach a tipping point where suddenly they're just, um, there's too many bankruptcies, there's too many closed businesses, too much damage done where the, the recovery becomes a different shape. And, and it's not a matter of a V anymore. It's really a, an economy that, that takes a different form than it did before. And that, and that could be quite damaging. Um, yeah, because many of the benefits that, that were put in place with the CARES Act earlier this year, they expired two months ago. And, and, and a lot of employees that were put on furlough initially are now you know, permanently unemployed. We obviously did see a recovery in some of our, our jobs numbers, but our unemployment rate is still floating around 7.9% right now. So it, there's there's a significant impact, and in, in the number of businesses that closed as of the end of August, I think it was one in seven permanently closed small businesses, about eight hundred fifty thousand, which is, you know, just so unfortunate. Hopefully, there will be some support, additional support coming. I'm sure there will be, but what shape and what what shape it takes and, and the timeline is still to be determined. Sure, sure. So the last thing we want to discuss today is uh, the topic of long-term care. Um, there's some articles recently talking about that type of insurance and, and how it's positioned. And, and Katie, you and I have had a, a kind of a long relationship with long-term care conversations because they've changed over the years. What, what are some of the things that, that often come up as both opportunities and challenges when talking about long-term care and, and insuring against you know, events late in life? Yeah, that, that market has changed so much as far as the, the insurers that are providing the coverage. And then there's two, I would say, more popular ways of uh, achieving long-term care insurance at this point. There's the traditional standard policies where you can buy an insurance policy just to provide money if long-term care services are needed. And, and typically long-term care services being needed are defined as the inability to do two out of the six daily living activities. So things like dressing yourself, eating, you know, daily living activities. Um, so you can buy insurance to protect against that specifically. Or something else that, that has gained some popularity is purchasing a life insurance policy with a long-term care rider, which allows you to access that death benefit to pay for long-term care expenses if it's needed. And, and I think there's been a large gravity towards that because at some point or another, whether it's needing it for long-term care or, or if you pass away, there, there's going to be a benefit received. But it's, it's, it's an ever-changing landscape and how that's covered sometimes comes down to what your personal resources are as well. So I don't know if you want to touch on that, Dennis. Yeah, I mean, at some point, everyone in their 50s and 60s starts to think differently about their risk. You know, if you're, if you're married with kids and a mortgage and you pass away too young, that's a big risk for your family. Mm -hmm. But as everyone kind of launches off to their own and you pay off your debts and suddenly the risk of passing away too young is replaced by the risk of living too long. Like, do I have enough savings? What if I do live to age 90? Can I retire at 60 and have a 35, you know, maybe 40 year long retirement? And what if there's a big spend at the end just for my health care? So it makes you sort of assess, do I want to use my resources and accumulate my resources and keep that savings there? Do I have enough savings for it? Or do I want to offload that risk by using something related to insurance? Or, or They're all very unique conversations. And like Social Security, there's no one solution as you go household to household. It changes for everyone. So we wanted to bring that up today because if you've been having these conversations in your house, if you're wondering, you know, how to think this through, it is something that we have uh, extensive conversations about just saying what is the right way to address um, the unique risk of potentially living a long life and having to pay for health care at the end. So, Katie, 
what are you reading, listening to, watching these days? What 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 passes for for entertainment in October of twenty twenty? Um, outside of my kids' activities, <laughs> there's. I'm gonna say I am. I am thrilled actually to be back on the soccer sidelines, but I think uh, other things. Um, my, we're we're still working our way through Breaking Bad. I think we we fit in one episode maybe once a week. <laughs> so. There's all, there's only how many seasons? A long, a long commitment there. This, this this sounds like a 2021 goal. So. <laughs> yeah. How about you? What what what's piquing your interest? Um, this, this this is the spooky season. We're a big spooky family. We like watching the you know, not not you know the, the super scary stuff. We like things that go bump in the night, just kind of thing. So the the kids have been watching some uh, you know Garfield Halloween, some of the old classics. We watch Charlie Brown. Um, you know, it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown the other night. So we, we like doing doing the spooky stuff when, when Halloween comes around, telling you know, stories by the campfire. Um, that that's been that's been our focus. I love I love this time of year when the days get shorter, a little chillier. I get to wear my Morton Brown swag. It's great. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, listen, we wish all of you the best. If you have any questions regarding the political environment, how it affects your investing, um, just what's happening in the economy with stimulus or personal conversations about long-term care or other types of unique risks, uh, let us know. We'll be happy to have a conversation. So wish all of you the best. And Katie, we'll catch up with you soon. Sounds good. Take care.